Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to create a uh, brush for uh, sculptors. And I believe these brushes could also be used in probably Blender, uh, ZBrush, and maybe Mudbox. I don't know enough about Mudbox to really say or ZBrush for a matter of fact uh, but I know it works in Sculptress and I'm pretty sure it'll work in Blender so anyway I'm using GIMP here and this is GIMP 2.8 and it is freely downloadable and uh, I will put a link in the description to uh, GIMP so anyway uh, let's go ahead and get started I want to create a a new file and let's just make it uh, 400 by 400 uh, I'm not sure really what the best size is at this point uh, I've just been uh, trying it out uh, this technique uh, today uh, but anyway uh, let's just go ahead and set it to 400 by 400 <clears throat> and we won't uh, down here under advanced options fill with transparency okay uh, thing I like to do is turn off this show layer boundary the layer boundary is that little <coughs> pardon me little yellow line you get around the edge of your canvas here okay let's uh, go ahead and create a couple of guides so I'm gonna go up here to the menu and I'm gonna go to guides and I want to create a new guide by percent and it, let's do a uh, vertical at a position of 50 percent and let's go up here and back to guides and do another one except this time let's do a horizontal guide at 50 percent and where these two guides meet uh, is dead center of our canvas because we're going to use our gradient tool and what we want to uh, have happen is uh, our gradient tool when we start using it we want it to snap to the center there okay um, I'm going to set our gradient from foreground to transparent and we want uh, the shape set to radial and uh, also there is a little icon with two arrows on it right there and you want to uh, reverse that so I'm gonna bring my gradient tool close to the center here and then I'm gonna hold control and it should snap to the dead center here oh, we need to uh, make sure that your foreground color is black so once let's go twice okay uh, let's go ahead and go back up to image and let's remove our guides and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser tool and I've got uh, the size of my brush set about uh, uh, to remove a pretty good portion of uh, the center of this gradient. I'm just going to click in the middle. You may need to do it a couple of times. I think that'll work. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now let's go ahead and create a new layer and it should also be transparent and 400 by 400. And let's just go ahead and click on this background layer. And uh, what we want this new layer to be below let's see here want our new layer to be let's convert this and see if we can uh, new layer from visible delete the background layer and then uh, I don't know what's going on here Let's uh, 
Well, what I want is this <coughs> gradient layer above this other layer. Why I can't uh, move that up? Let's see. Let's try it this way. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't drag it up. Usually you can drag it up, but for some reason I couldn't. But but you have a couple of arrow keys here, <clears throat> and you'll just highlight uh, that layer and then press up or down to move the move that layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and select on the newly created layer, and let's change our foreground color using the little arrow keys here uh, to white. And then let's go to our uh, <clears throat> bucket fill tool and we'll do a foreground fill and we'll just click there in the middle and let's just um, let's grab our brush tool and let's change our size down let's change it down quite a bit and then we'll change our brush. Just uh, grab some sort of. I'll tell you what. Let's use this same brush here, and let's make a uh, brush that creates a crack. So change it back to black, and let's just go like this here. <coughs> Okay, this should create a brush that's a crack. Okay, let me explain uh, the gradient layer. Um, the gradient layer um, goes from a white color and fades out to a black color. Uh, if you use a brush that uh, has harsh colors or does not fade out you could get some edges on your brush that are are really rough and this really helps okay let's go ahead and export this out and uh, I already have a uh, folder I've created for testing uh, brushes and so I'm just going to export that out and I exported that out as a PNG uh, I believe it also can be uh, exported out as a JPEG. So now let's go into Sculptors here. And uh, under the brush, you can just click that and click New. And then just uh, navigate to uh, the folder where you've saved your brush. And click Open. <coughs> And then to use that brush, just click on the brush icon. Now let's look at, uh, uh, turn on our wireframe here in Sculptress. And as you can see, we don't have uh, much resolution here. So uh, make sure you have this brush enabled. And we'll just click here on it. As you can see, you can't really see anything happen because that's because we do not have enough resolution. So I'm going to turn on the wireframe and subdivide it a couple of times. And then we should be able to... Hopefully you can see that. There is a uh, crack texture there. You can also invert the brush. And if you invert it, usually you get this big uh, square. Um, let's turn up the strength of our brush. Oh, let's turn off that, turn off the invert. Okay, let's go back in here and uh, control Z and take away that uh, crack look and let's just choose a uh, some textured brush. You can go and uh, download some some brushes if you want. Uh, I'm loading up the grass brush here. I'm just gonna click in there and create uh, kind of a grass texture texture, and I'm just going to export that again. And I'm over, gonna overwrite 
uh, that texture that I had in there. I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to delete that brush and I'm going to choose that uh, new brush we just made. And spin around a bit here. And there you have it. Uh, you can mess around with the strength and maybe choose a lazy brush. Um, you can turn up the detail a bit and get a bit more. <clears throat> and actually that's what we should have done is, is uh, turn up our detail. Let's go ahead and subdivide this one more time. And you can see the uh, greater the subdivision level the greater uh, definition you get with your brush. Let's go back into uh, GIMP one more time and let's uh, do something a little different here. Let's go ahead and control Z that and and this time let's bucket fill and let's use a pattern. And let's choose uh, this pattern here and see. Well, that's kind of a. I haven't tried this out, and since uh, uh, that is kind of a grayscale there, the light and dark, uh, that may work pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and export that out. But you can. Uh, create these brushes and just continue to uh, test test them out and see what you can come up with. Let's see, let's turn up the detail a bit more and see how that looks. Maybe we should turn off the clay and turn off airbrush. Well, yeah, I guess that'll work. That's kind of a cool texture right there. That looks like uh, <clears throat> maybe if you uh, used it on uh, maybe cloth. Let's uh, try a different texture. Let's uh, mm, Gimp Gimp has a several preloaded textures so you can use those or you can uh, uh, use a photo let's try this one here and then uh, if you have a texture that is a colored texture you want to uh, uh, desaturate that so it is as a gray scale and also you may want to come up to uh, colors and then go to your levels and kind of mess with that a little bit. <clears throat> um, I'm creating these brushes. These are alpha brushes and uh, the uh, the white color in uh, the image is raised up higher than uh, the black or the black is supposed to be transparent. So the lighter the color, the more raised uh, the texture will be, and then the dark areas are more flat or transparent. So let's export this one out. Give this a try. It's, that looks very similar to the other one. Uh, but anyway, I've showed you how to uh, create some brushes. I'm not going to go into Blender or anything and and try it. Uh, but just remember to make sure that if you use a colored image to desaturate it or turn it to grayscale. You may, may also, uh, I'll tell you what, before <coughs> we stop this tutorial, let's go ahead and, and try this plug-in that I've loaded. Uh, let's see, where is it at? It's a, uh, I'll load it up. And it's under filters. I loaded up a uh, normal map uh, plug-in. And I can't.
can't really see it. Let's turn the samples up. Change the samples. Maybe... I can't really see it. Let's try it and see what happens. So, and then desaturate it. Well, I don't think that's going to have enough uh, definition in it. Let's try changing the levels here. Darkening up some of that texture. There we go. You can see you can always play with your levels to kind of uh, bring out different highlights in your uh, texture. So let's export that out. See what it looks like. Find a blank spot here and load up, load that up right quick. Hmm. Okay. Well, that didn't work that great, did it? So anyway, um. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, go and try to make you some textures and uh, some brushes and um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, I've got some more tutorials coming soon and uh, subscribe and like this video have a great day